What is up guys? It's ya boy Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be taking a much closer look at a weapon that was only added last week into Destiny 2 Season of Arrivals but has caused a ton of interest within the game. So many people are talking about this weapon, trying to go for god rolls, tweeting me, hey is this a god roll, is this a god roll? And that weapon is the Aikilo sniper rifle re-added from way back in the day with the original year one warmind expansion but it has a new lease on life a totally new max infusion level and most importantly a completely new perk layout and it can now get random rolls but is this weapon really all that it's cracked up to be is this something you should invest a ton of time in going after well let's get started but um, here's the thing, if you got that god roll, it requires you to hit all your shots. You know how you're gonna hit all your shots? By being focused. You know how you get focused? By drinking advanced GG focus, baby! KHD for 10% off, that's how you do an ad, boys. Didn't even see it coming, so natural, just slid right into it. Anyways, check it out in the description down below. So. Let's talk about that aforementioned god roll because there's actually some debate over what you really want in it. Well, most importantly, you're going to want fourth times the charm. What this is going to let you do is after four rapid precision hits, you get two rounds back in your magazine. And this lets you just go off with this weapon. It makes a, a seven round magazine with an extended mag perk into 11 shots. Now actually, this can also spawn with triple tap, which gives you one round back in the magazine after landing three rapid precision hits. But with seven rounds again, triple tap is only gonna get you 10 rounds in total. And generally, fourth times the charm works better on the god roll. However, triple tap is certainly not a bad perk and it's a great consolation prize if you don't get the utter god roll. Now the other thing you're really looking to pair with this in the PvE god roll, which of course is what we're focusing on today, is the actually pretty rare on sniper rifles, high impact reserves. Usually you see this on auto rifles and it sucks, but what it does is that rounds at the end of the magazine deal more damage. With a sniper rifle, that matters quite a bit. But how much more damage are we talking about? Well, as always, I've done the math. So, you're gonna start out with 9,626 damage for the first few rounds. Then, the first time high impact reserves is going to trigger is when you have four rounds left in your magazine. So, when you literally see the number 4 and then you shoot, it's going to do 10,812 damage. The second trigger for 3 rounds left is 11,331 damage. Then the third trigger for 2 bullets left, 12,102 damage. And interestingly, the last trigger for the final round, when you only have 1 bullet left, is actually the same amount of damage. So the second to last and last shot do the same damage. Very interesting. Now, what is that in terms of percentages? Well, here you go. First trigger, 12.5% increase in damage. Second trigger, 18%. And then the third and the fourth trigger are both tied for a 26% damage increase. Now, on its own, this would be very, very good. You have a perk like triple tap or fourth times, giving this weapon so many more rounds in the magazine before you need to reload, extending its damage output, and then you have high impact reserves just giving you more damage. But it's how these two perks interact with one another which makes this weapon so powerful. Because you're getting rounds back into the magazine, you're getting those first, second, third, and fourth triggers over and over again. So if you shoot that second to last shot get a 26% bonus last shot also get a 26% bonus and then fourth times the trigger activates you get to shoot the second to last and last shot again also getting a 26% damage bonus each time again so these two perks interact with one another perfectly and it ends up doing way more damage than if you just had clown cartridge for example plus high impact reserves because you get to re-trigger all of these final bullets in the magazine. However, as I mentioned, there is some debate over what is the utter god roll and that lies within the second perk slot. 
Do you want an extended mag perk? All of them are going to actually give you just one extra round because it's capped at seven rounds for snipers. So tack mag would be the best one overall. Or do you actually want six shots in the magazine? Some people are saying that because with fourth times the charm activating on the final bullet when you only have six rounds and letting you reshoot those final two bullets for max damage, that's actually gonna give you more damage overall than seven rounds. Well, I tested that out because I actually got Alloy Magazine, which gives you faster reload when the magazine is empty, which would be the other arguable god roll when you only want six rounds. And it turns out with six rounds, we almost kill this ogre. As you can see, the health is like right in the middle of the U. But then when we switch back to seven rounds, and we shoot the same ogre, all precision shots, it's extremely close. But if you look closely, the health doesn't quite reach the U in Simulated Ogre, and therefore, with seven shots, you do more damage. So why is there a debate? Well, I think it's because DPS is kind of used as, oh my god, so much DPS, uh, everyone use this gun, but DPS is not the only thing that matters. Sustained DPS is very important, and that's when you start to look at damage output over a long period of time, and it include reloads and all of that stuff. If DPS was the only thing that mattered, the guns that did the most damage for one shot would all be the best, but we all know that's not the case, because a damage phase lasts for a longer period of time. So, in terms of total damage for a magazine, you're outputting more with seven rounds, as you can clearly see. It is, however, extremely close, and I think the takeaway from that is the fact that you don't need an extended mag perk when you're looking for a top tier roll with this weapon. And technically, if you're just looking at the most damage within a short period of time, six rounds is best. But it also means that if you miss one single time, you're only gonna trigger fourth times once. Seven rounds gives you one shot, you can get to the body, and then if all other shots are precision, you're still gonna trigger fourth times twice. Like, it's a little bit more reliable, the total damage is better. If you're versing anything other than bosses, you want those extra rounds as well. So I think, honestly, it really doesn't matter which way or the other. The most important thing is the synergy and combination between fourth times and high impact reserves. And that's great, because it means it's easier to get a god roll, especially when you consider how to acquire this weapon is unlocking the Exodus-focused engrams by doing Zavala's weekly quest, and then also unlocking the Assassin's-focused Exodus Umbral engrams, which only drop this sniper and a grenade launcher. So it's actually very easy to focus your farming efforts into getting this weapon over and over again until you get that combo of fourth times plus high impact reserves. However, with all of that being said, is this the next DPS superstar? Well, it actually has competition. Because it turns out rapid fire frames are extremely good for DPS output. They're really what you're looking for. This weapon is amazing, but there's a weapon that's actually arguably directly better from last season, the Distant Tumulus. As you can see, I got the god roll here with an extended mag perk, and then I got, importantly, Clown Cartridge plus Firing Line. Clown Cartridge gives you like 11 rounds with this weapon if you reload automatically, no hitting precision shots or anything like that, and then Firing Line will boost precision damage by 20% every single shot throughout those 11 rounds. So the Distant Tumulus, when you're activating Firing Line, does straight up more damage than the Aikilos. So why am I dedicating a whole video to the Aikilos? Well, it's because you don't often get to activate Firing Line. I found it actually pretty inconsistent. In a raid scenario, when you have a dedicated team, yeah, that Distant Tumulus role is actually gonna be just straight better. But if you're doing any sort of solo content, right? If you don't have a dedicated team, if you're not on voice communications with the team and one guy's off on his own doing his own thing, then the Aikilos is straight up better. Because firing line is all or nothing. If it doesn't trigger, it adds literally no benefit. The Aikilos is pretty much always gonna get that extra damage. And so therefore, for a vast majority of activities, it is the superior weapon. Now the other rapid fire frame sniper in the discussion for DPS is actually the Supremacy. Now this is from the Last Wish raid, 
But remember that raid gear, even though it's a very old piece of content, is actually updated to act as if it dropped just this season. So it's gonna be a long time before it sunsets. However, the Supremacy, although it can get triple tap, and before it was very good, actually triple tap, and then Ambitious Assassin was technically the god rule. Ambitious Assassin, obviously a lot harder to trigger than stuff like Fourth Times and Clown Cartridge, but the fact that the Aikilos can get that damage increase from high impact reserves puts it well ahead in terms of DPS than the Supremacy. So it clearly replaces the Supremacy. And then if you're not doing, you know, raid teams, it replaces the Tumulus too. And so therefore, it just lies in a super good spot right now. It is arguably the most desirable PvE snipe rifle, legendary PvE snipe rifle in the game right now. And this is going to really be a weapon you are going to want to farm for. Even though snipers were nerfed this season and a lot of people didn't enjoy that, they're still outputting significant amounts of damage and if they are ever buffed even just by a little bit this thing is going to be like the top of the meta. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.